You are going to definitely be inspired today about God turning it around. And Amen. we want you to use that number if you need that kind of prayer, 1-800-329-0029. Now, our guest is a third generation preacher's kid. So all you preachers, <laughs> you are going to be inspired just by that alone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But she ran from the calling of God on her life. Yet she ended up marrying a prophetic voice in the church and is now being used in God's healing ministry. Her very presence here today is a witness of God's healing power and his purpose for being greater than we could possibly ever think. Please welcome our friend, Heather Z. Come on in, Heather. Good to see you, girl. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Bless you. Thank you. Hello. Well, of course, you're married to Joseph Z. Yes. It's been a blessing here on Daystar. And I met Joseph and Heather through you. Yes, ma'am. Because you've known them for a while. Yes. And uh, you've brought some really good guests to Daystar. Thank well, you very much. Thank you. I've been blessed being in the kingdom for decades to know some really great people. You in do the know some great people. And thank you for that. Um, well, usually Joseph is here and we're talking to him, but today we get to talk to you because yes. you have an incredible story. And I told you, I said, we've got to tell your testimony. Yes. And you had told me, now, Heather, she can preach. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You said she's a little firecracker. She is, when absolutely. She gets up there. <laughs> okay, so let's, can we just start at the beginning? Yes. Um, kind of, you're raised in a Christian home, but there was a, a terrible accident that happened. So let's go back and Tell that story. Yeah, so uh, I was a gymnast from nine till my senior in high school. And honestly, I, it was after gymnastics practice, so my muscles were stressed. And my parents asked me to take a, a, their friend's, you know, church friend's kid to the, to the park. And so honestly, we were just there on the backswing. I was like parallel bars on the backswing. My muscles gave out and I literally like slingshot Boom. forward, hit my head and I heard it snap and everything went black. And so next thing I know, I'm walking down the street holding my neck. So I have no idea how I got up. Mm -hmm. So that was the Lord yeah. in and of itself. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you, you probably could do all these different moves being in mm -hmm. gymnastics. This was just kind of a freak thing that happened, right? Oh, yeah. I was only two inches off the ground, just kind of swinging back and forth like kids do. You lift yourself mm. with your shoulders. And, oh, wow. and so it was... I wasn't doing anything crazy. Yeah. So I walk in the door and my mom looks at me and I, I said, I think I broke my neck. And she's like, yeah. And I was in so much shock. I was yeah, like, your body was, yeah. One tear was all I could do. And then they rushed me to the hospital and we got there. And so what did they say when you got to the hospital? Uh, so they said, Heather, we're, we're going to take some pictures, a CAT scan. And so as they got me in there, uh, when you're 12, you have no idea what's going on. And they said, Heather, we'll be right back. We're just going to take some photos of you. Well, when they did, I got so, I felt sleepy. My eyes began to shut. And the next thing I know, I was looking at myself on the table. Mm. And so I wasn't afraid. I wasn't scared. There was, you know, there's no fear. But I was just kind of very matter of fact, oh, that's me. And then I left. And so mm. um, I've interviewed so many people that have had near-death experiences. And they say exactly what you're saying, mm -hmm. where their spirit yeah. leaves. Because this, this body is just a shell. Oh, yeah. It's and so your spirit came out, you saw yourself, but did you realize at the time that you were dying or that you had died? No, I had no idea. It was just, it was interesting because it's surreal. surreal. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's yeah. just very matter of fact. And I left. And when I, as I left the next day, it was kind of an interesting in-between place where I didn't know that as a kid, but I do now that I was in an in-between place where I, I knew people, I saw people I knew who had passed, but also people, I could see people present and then the next thing I know I'm looking outside and I see these beautiful I don't know how to say that grass looks beautiful mm. like how, <laughs> everyone says that the colors are amazing the color green is not a green that we have on this earth it's, it's not illuminating yes. it, it just I was just all I knew is is I wanted to be out there I, I saw grass and beyond that I saw wheat and the only thing I what you saw grass and beyond that what wheat wheat, wheat. gold a color of gold again were you um amazed at what you saw like yeah I mean were you thinking I've never seen anything like this before yeah but I I don't know if it was because I was 12 13 I just didn't have the wherewithal to think that this is like, I just didn't have it in the well, you were just experiencing it yeah. you were just experiencing it and so it was so beautiful that I just thought I just want to be out be out there I just want to see it and as I began to think that I went through the wall because I was in a place of like my home, but it wasn't my home. 
but felt like my home. And I went through the wall and I was outside within the grass and, and seeing the wheat. And it was just mind boggling, something to us as so mm. simple as that. And the next thing I know, I was compelled to just look up. And I've only heard a couple of stories of people passing, not very many mm -hmm. actually. And as I was compelled to look up, I saw these two huge hands fill the entire sky. And I've heard other people talk about, I saw Jesus, he was the height of about six feet of a man and this, that was not my experience mm -hmm. at all. And so as I'm looking up, I saw these huge hands fill the entire sky and begin to come down. And there were hands as like galaxy moving hands. So I, we know that he spoke mm. and formed, but for me, it was God, the creator of the universe, God, the father. And as they came together, as soon as they came together, I was sitting in his hands and that's when he spoke. That's when I first heard him. And it hit me right here in the abdomen area. And it truly was that spirit to spirit, heart to heart encounter. And he just began to, it was the same time that John Paul Jackson spoke to Joseph about his wife. So the same time that's going on, the same mm. summer, I also, the Lord was speaking to me, I had a sense of family, a sense of my husband. Um, so let me just explain that. So John yeah. Paul Jackson is a dear friend of ours, a prophetic voice that we loved. Mm -hmm. Many of you remember years ago, him being, there's a picture of him. So he's speaking prophetically mm -hmm. in a service to what's going to be your husband, mm -hmm. Joseph Z. Yeah. And so what did he, what did John Paul say to Joseph? He said, you need to keep yourself, not that he had any issues at the time because he was young as well. He said, you're going to need to keep yourself pure. The Lord says he has a wife for you and he is protecting her at the moment, but you will also be a protection for her, which 12, not knowing some mm -hmm. of the things I was going to go through in my life right. at that time. But he said, you will be like a protection for her, but I have a designed an assignment for you to do. But you wouldn't actually come along till when after, how many years after that mm, word? So we were, what, 20, 21? So about a decade. Yeah. Now, what, okay. did, what did the Lord say other, did you did he say anything to you that you remember? Yeah. Yeah, he said, I, oh, I'm gonna try not to cry. He said, I designed you specifically for assignments. I have specific assignments that I placed on the inside of you. And he said, and that's when I also had a sense of a husband that I need you to fulfill. And yes, there are others that can do it. Mm -hmm. He said, but I've designed you purposed for this in the earth. Amen. And so then after he went through all that, he just said, Heather, don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. I have you in my hands. It's time for you to go now. And I just said, Lord, I don't, I don't want to go. Sure, sure. And he's so simple. He just repeated himself, Heather, don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. I have you in my hands. It's time for you to go now. Nobody ever wants to come back. No. No, that's what all. No, I that's did not. That's what they all say. If they ever experience that presence, they never want to come back to uh -huh. this earth. So then were you, did you go through like a tunnel or were you instantly back in your body? What was that like? So then next, after that, after he said that, my eyes opened. So I'm there on the mm -hmm. table again. My eyes open and wind began to fill my lungs and I went, <gasps> like this. And C1 controls your lungs and your breathing, which when you're 12, you don't know that. And so I had broken C1 completely and uh, it began to fill my lungs. And there was a specialist in town that was doing a whole conference on that. And he forgot his pager at that specific hospital wow. in Minneapolis. And so they said, you're not gonna believe it. We have this little girl in here. Can you come look at her x-rays? And he did. And he said, oh, she absolutely broke C1. He said, but it's interesting. It's been fused together. And he said, in a hair to the left or the right, she'd absolutely be dead. Mm. And so he said, soft collar, because they were think, looking at doing a halo. And he said, just a soft collar for six weeks and she'll be just fine. Wow, praise God. Wow, so they actually saw where the bone was separated mm -hmm. to start with? Yes. But then when God sent you back, mm -hmm. he fused it back together. Yes, absolutely. So, so did they admit that that was a miracle? They did. They said that they have to, they have a book of miracles or the ex unexplained that mm. they can't, and but they've still put it in the book for that, that's that great. it's the mir miraculous. Amen. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know, I love the fact that you, um, you're talking about God, the creator of the universe. I think about a song I used to sing. He spoke the word and all the worlds came into order. Then I can totally visualize those hands coming down mm. and, you know, and 
uh, God is such a great God, and he that's is. why it's so moving for you to talk about. But then what happened to you? I mean, you didn't go home and go, oh, my gosh, I want to preach the gospel. No. <laughs> okay, because no. you were raised in church, right, and all yeah. that. And you, Heather, uh, yeah. so what, how could you not? You, after you met that. the living God, but then what happened? Because, like, you know, mm -hmm. life happens. Take yeah. us forward. Well, I mean, it's like the children of Israel. They saw the sea open. They saw all these miraculous things. But even when they were delivered out of a thing, they get out there and be like, you know, why, God, why have you forsaken us and leaving us out? We'd be better mm -hmm. off to go back. And so you just, this is a broke, fallen world. And we have a natural flesh mm -hmm. that we have to work through on the daily and tend to it. It's a, Adam said it, it. Adam was to tend to the garden, which we also know is protect from all the outside mm -hmm. things. And you have to protect your heart in those moments. And I was too young and and little, and and more so. I seeing all of the both sides of ministry can be tough. Absolutely. Yeah. And get jaded and say. So what happened? Little, swell. Tell, tell us the journey from twelve to whatever age. To whenever was. you arrived. Yeah. <laughs> to, uh, oh, till I arrived. Well. Um, I ended up, you know, through high school, I actually had a very traumatic experience that happened. And I'll just sum it up with a word. I'm happy to talk more, but it was like modern day trafficking that mm. had happened. Mm. My parents were off ministering and um, it was a f friend. And so I had something happen to me. It's mm -hmm. not like I, I'm going to be rebellious and go out there, but because of that. That trauma violation, that trauma, and I was... Can you share what happened to you? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so a friend just said, hey, let's go hang out. And I'm like, okay, great, let's go shoot some pool. And as we're shooting pool, I was a very controlled person, very reserved, like assemblies of God, be seen but not heard. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, and so all of a sudden at the pool hall, I felt myself kind of let loose and my brain thinking, I don't behave this way. Next thing I know, I don't remember anything. Which with drugs, yeah, they with don't drugs. they don't take to my body because mm -hmm. I've woken up in surgeries with the dope, kidney failure and all this stuff. No. So had somebody slipped drugs? They slipped me drugs in your drink or something. Uh huh. I like and I don't remember how many men came through my house that night because mm. he knew my parents were gone. And so several, and I remember seeing another girl that they had brought there. And so yeah, there's several so multiple men. rapes. Yeah. yeah, and I don't know for how long. I know it was through the night. Oh my goodness, and how did you find out what had happened? Like, did you know the next day? Did somebody tell you what happened? So it's kind of like major surgery. You don't think with anesthesia to have the thought, how did I get myself dressed and from this point to the car to home when you've had major surgeries? It was like that and it was an unlocking and an unfolding. Mm -hmm. And I would start remembering and start remembering. Well, you were in an altered state because of the drugs, so mm -hmm. it would take a while for your memory to actually put that all together. Mm -hmm. And there's there may be a lot of ladies out there yeah. right now, you've experienced uh, sexual abuse or rapes mm -hmm. or trauma. And uh, and if you've kept that a secret, it's going to hurt you. Yeah. And I want you just to call that number, 1-800-329-0029, and let someone know what happened yeah. so that that cannot be a secret. We'll let you continue, but I just feel like someone probably needs to open Absolutely. that secret up. Yeah, no, there is help here for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so it took time and an unfolding in between just prayer and Joseph and I. Just he also very much helped. How old were you when this happened to you, Heather? Uh, I was probably 18. And so when did Joseph come into the picture? 21. 21. So you yeah. still had all of that probably Mm -hmm. hidden, didn't you? Oh, very much. So did you ever tell your parents? Did you ever tell anyone? No. I did, because... What would, would you say to a girl yeah. who hasn't told anyone? Mm. Just look in the camera. What would you say to that girl? I would say to you to to not want, it's true, don't hold that in, but find someone you can trust mm -hmm. and you can go to and begin to just start the process mm -hmm. of unpacking that, unfolding that. You didn't, it, it, it didn't, it's, the thing I get frustrated about is the Lord, is some people are like, why didn't God intervene? Why didn't this? We're in a broke, fallen world. It's not your fault. You were invaded, but you don't have to stay that way. You can truly be healed and whole through the power of Jesus mm -hmm. and healing. And and I was delivered of a thing, not knowing Amen. that I went through a form of just deliverance, really, and not even trying to. It just, but yeah. there's help. Amen. Call Daystar. Yeah. And, so, and, and, wait, I was going to ask you, because I mean, because of what you deal with as a counselor, 
um, number one, is so important for you to tell somebody. Yes. But number two, I mean, um, there. What is the connection to, as far as sexual uh, sin or or something that's happened to someone? It wasn't their fault, mm-hmm. and just um, and the spirit. Like, what? Why is that such a complicated thing? And why does it have well, to be dealt well, with? Well, trauma trauma resets you, and you you no longer feel like you can trust that you are safe, or that the world is safe, or that people are safe. Mm-hmm. And so you start changing the way you live. And that's why it's important to trust by sharing your story. And I just want to share, I mean, I was sexually abused too, so there's men out there, you've been sexually abused, and maybe you need to call, because we're not talking about a girl thing, we're talking about a perpetrator thing, and they perpetrate both men and women. And so you need to call as well. But there, you can get counseling, there's books that can help you, there's all that. But here's what I want to say. That sin of the other person does not disqualify you from God's calling that's right. or your gifts. Yeah, that's Okay. Good. I was sexually abused when I was a young teen, probably 13 or 14, and it didn't disqualify me from being what God has created in my life as a Christian psychologist and author. It didn't disqualify Heather from healing people and praying for people. It doesn't disqualify you either. But don't keep it in secret, because if we confess what's inside of us, then God can heal it and we bring it to the light. And there's freedom in that. But I do agree, find a pastor or a counselor or a spiritually mature woman, if you're a woman or a man, and, and share that there so you feel safe and confident that they can keep that. Okay, so when was the first time that you shared what had happened? Did you share it with Joseph, your family? You shared it with Joseph? I did. So yeah. were y'all married when you shared it? Or was it? No, no? it was it was before. I was when I met him, he was just like, I'm like, do you do anything wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> and uh, but I just he I He had kept himself pure. A very much godly pure. man. Yes. <laughs> but he was he God knew he was gonna bring him into your life. Yeah. He because he was he was, he made God his father because he was thrown out of his house at 13, 12, 13 mm-hmm. for the gospel sake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he, he was very tight with the Lord. But for myself, when we met, I just basically threw everything out on the table. I'm like, this yeah. is all of me. Mm-hmm. And I was actually really afraid because I thought he's not going to want me. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he wanted the prim, perfect, mm-hmm. Jesus loving, never the, you know, never, white, white never stained, snow, yeah. never been stained, never had anything. Mm. At least that's what you thought. That's what the enemy told you. So yeah. you probably thought I might could really fall for him. So I'm just going to lay it all out there because yeah. I don't want to be rejected later on. Mm-hmm. And I did. I said, this is all of me. And, and what did he say? He actually had to think about it. He needed a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he probably remembered what John Paul said to him too, mm-hmm. which about, was what? About the protection. You will be a protection for her. And I... I'm protecting her right now. She's in, she's in something right now. And he said that she's mm-hmm. in the middle of something. Um, uh, but I'm protecting her, but you will also be a protector for her That's in good. her life. Okay. So how did, when did he decide and pray about it and come back and say, okay, let's do this? <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, well, he, he knew the minute he saw me. Mm-hmm. So he actually got a prophetic word f- from my father, not knowing it was me. And at the same time, I asked my father how these meetings were going. He's like, you should be the pastor up there. I'm like, yeah, okay. But it was, it was later in um, just get it, starting to get to know each other and starting a friendship. And he was so non-threatening because I went from that moment, I downward spiraled to sure, partying were, yeah. and drugs and all the things. You abandoned yourself. Oh, yeah. And so meeting him, I was just like, he, he just... I don't know. There was just such a connection. Mm-hmm. It was like, you're the person, but you are not anything of what I, I would have thought. And, and I wasn't either for him. Mm-hmm. But that connection came just through doing meetings and, and actually putting myself in the hands of the Lord again, saying, because he invited me to a youth camp saying, just, you know, come on. He, I think he was just probably thinking he felt, I was thinking it felt bad for me. But as I got up there, I was just watching everything and people worshiping the Lord. I'm like, they're going to be partying in the clubs by next week. They're going to forget about this. That was my tainted view. But the thing that I found with him and all the things I, well, I said to the Lord, I'm like, either you're going to show yourself real right now or I'm out. I'm like, I need to know, are you real? I mean, I knew you as a kid. I saw you, but that feels so distant now. You're either real or you're not real. I need to know. And I said, so I need to see you now or I'm completely out. And the next thing I know, the power of God hit me so hard. I was in the back of the room by myself during this Mm -hmm. youth conference 
a, a camp that was going on. And he, I got slain in this. I, I got knocked down on the power of God and I completely got up changed. Praise God. But it was a, it a, was process. a, a process after that. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. And so we just... But this wasn't your first rodeo. I mean, it wasn't your only rodeo with death. No, no. Or talk about mm -hmm. the next one or two of There those. can't be more. Yeah. yeah. We just got yeah. her out of this one. Are you kidding me? Well, wow. I know. But, the, but it's a longer movie for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a longer yeah. movie. It was unfolding what the Lord had said when I was a kid. And uh, so from there, everything from... Uh, my daughter dying in the womb for three days. She okay, was dead. Tell that story. Uh, so she had stopped kicking. We went in. They started doing the ultrasound. How far along were you? Oh, I had a baby bump. I yeah. was, I was probably about a good maybe five, not quite six months mm -hmm. along, uh -huh. maybe six months. And uh, so as we get in there, Joseph just said, "I'm sure you see all kinds of stuff," and he kindly was trying to tell us without telling us. Because Joseph said, you know, it's some hard things. He, as he's scanning, he's like, sometimes the child's dead and I can't, I don't have the authority to say anything. And so he was basically trying to tell us, well, mm. by the end of a really long night, they sent me home and they said, we'll have your physician call you for your next appointment to come in for basically. So there was no heartbeat. Removal, yeah, nothing. And mm -mm. the baby had stopped kicking. Mm-hmm. And they basically were saying, we're going to have to what? Sounds like your mom already. Remove. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm yeah. going to resurrect just to yes. show off. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming into this world. That's right. But I'm coming big. That's right. <laughs> and so they, they just said, we'll send you home. And there was no movement. And when we got home, Joseph said, I feel like I need to pray. I'm just going to lay hands on your stomach. And all, it was very simple. Mm -hmm. All he said was his baby, live. Baby, you live life. And we didn't fully know if sure, sure. she was, you know, completely gone at that point. I woke up the next morning fluttering in my stomach and then a foot runs across yeah, my yeah, stomach. Yeah, you know that feeling, yeah. And she starts kicking again. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And so when you went in, what did they say? So my... My OB doctor was a believer, absolute believer in, in Jesus. And so th I did get the letter like a couple of days later, but she said, I cannot believe this. She said, um, you're supposed to be having a procedure right now. And so, but she's, you're, she's clearly alive mm -hmm. and well, you know, things are going on here with activity. But I did receive the letter of, you know, it's not your fault if you need grief counseling, and they go through explaining. But I think we but, have a but picture. But she's lived a great life. Yeah, I think we have a picture of your yeah. daughter. She's recently married, Who's right? now 23 yes. years old. Is that her in the middle there? That's her in the middle. That's her on the right? On the right. And that's your son on the left? That's our son on the left. So yes. she lived. She did. And she just her. got married. She just got married. Yeah. And oh. he's wonderful. Oh, that's, that's so great. awesome. But then you, had a, you your story keeps going. So... <laughs> Tell us yeah. about the your, movie's your, continuing. Tell us about your son. We saw a picture of him. Tell what yeah. was his miracle process? So he was diagnosed severely autistic, severe, and um, so he, Joseph would travel a lot. And being a tired mom, I had two sick kids, and so we got him in. And they basically just said, "We really need to get you caught up, him caught up in his, you know, regimen." Mm -hmm. So um, I try to be sensitive to where other people are at. But from my personal experience, the, I just out of tiredness said, sure, okay. And he hit, they hit him in his le both legs and arms and with getting him caught up with his regimen. With, with the, the vaccine. With the vaccine. At least your childhood mm. vaccine. Was mm -hmm. he completely normal until that? Yes. He was completely, I mean, you don't know how many times I've heard this story. So okay. nothing new. I've given the story and we talk about that. But, yes. okay, so it was probably like the MMR, one of those. All of them, yeah. All of this, so they hit him. So what happened after the vaccines? He he was gone. I The next morning. So you lost eye contact? All of it, yeah. I would how, call him. How old was he at that point? Three. Three years mm. old. Wow. Two, maybe two and a half. Two and a half. So he had been completely normal, walking. I have videos of him completely normal. Wow. Before and after. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, that's a sensitive subject for some people, but yes. I've talked a lot about vaccine injuries mm -hmm. with kids mm -hmm. and, and the denial from the medical world yeah. that it is caused by vaccination. But mm -hmm. I know people have won lawsuits as a result of it. So mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to hear your 
argument about it. No. Those of you that have, not you, but people watching, <laughs> you want to do vaccines, that's group. fine. But I'm yeah. just saying, well, that's an, I've done shows on all of this with very reputable doctors. But um, so what, what did you say? I mean, you had to be devastated by this is your son. Yeah, well, it, hindsight's twenty twenty, so I didn't really know. And then it just, he kind of came to a little bit, but it just, after a while, you know when they're little and they just kind of gesture and they're not really using their words yet? Mm -hmm. You're a mom and you know what they want, so you just kind of go about your day and just, it's like, well, he's just probably really not feeling good. And, uh, and when you tell the doctors uh -huh. that this happened after or they give you the diagnosis, they mm -hmm. say, oh, they're not they're yeah. not connected. Yeah. Well, it's, even though every parent will say it's, right after this is what happened, uh -huh. like dramatic. Absolutely. 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 OK, so um, this is going to be. But fast forward his story, because he's a miracle. He's an absolute miracle. Yeah. OK, so what happened? Because it was a journey. It wasn't overnight. No. So finally, fast forwarding to about, I don't know, three and a half, four, he still wasn't talking. And so we took him in, someone suggested take him in and just get him, get tested. And so we did. And they said, oh no, he's severely, he'll probably never speak. He'll just flap and he'll maybe eat only three things and he'll probably never be potty trained. And so just almost vegetable like state. Mm. And I, my, you know, your first response is everything. When you get bad news, and I've just learned this with the other things that have happened mm. beyond this with my own personal life, your first response is everything. And it just came out of my mouth. Well, that's not what the words, that's not what my Bible says. That's not what Jesus provided. So I started to go to work on it in the natural and in prayer. And so he went to school for two years full round, round season before his first kindergarten class. And so we just would work with him mm -hmm. on all everything from detoxing to all the things. And I would begin to lay hands on him and lay hands on him. There came a point where he was acting up and his behavior wasn't good and he was having nightmares. And I'm like, what is going on right now? So the enemy does not want your kids to succeed. He's trying to steal in every way possible. But having a sensitive moment, the Holy Spirit asked me to ask him what his favorite class was in school. Now he's older. He's probably in second grade. And I just said, what's your, what's your favorite class? And he's like, meditation. And I was like, excuse me, what? what? You know, and I went raw, you know, on the inside, yeah. like, excuse me, because he was at a public school. You know, it should be gym or art yeah, or something. Yeah, something. And he's like, and I said, I'm sorry, what, excuse me, what class is that? And he's like, meditation. And I said, oh, okay, raw, you know, mom's coming out. Mm. And uh, I said, what, what is in, what is that? And he's like, well, it's where we have our pads and we lay down. And if somebody's angry, we talk about the angry octopus and how the sea child comes to us to help calm us down. Oh, I was like, oh, <laughs> I was mm. like picking up the phone, parent teacher conference right now. I want to know what is going on over there at that mm -hmm. school. And so, it, yeah, so I had to, there is a journey. I had to work through everything from the public system to my belief and faith in God sure, and going, sure, no, sure. hang on. Healing and wholeness is meant for my son, not this How's other How's he doing thing. today? Take Wonderful. He had 12 specialists. He has none now. He is fully grown. He works in the ministry. If you see some of our wow. 3D graphics, he does all of that. Amen. And uh, fully functional and. When did you see the turn, like, was it a gradual healing? It wasn't overnight. It was you not just, overnight. All of a sudden, he started speaking. You did potty train him. He did yes. go to school. Yeah. I mean, but it was just a step-by-step -step thing it where was. God was healing him, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't an instantaneous It was miracle. not. And so that's just it. Like with breaking my neck, that's a, that mir was a miracle. miracle. Yeah. You have miracles well, you don't have time to think or process mm -hmm. or get in the weeds on it as where healing is. Process. You, Sometimes you it's a process. It is a process where you truly have to get in a place of hanging on to what the Lord, the, what the word says and what the Lord has for you and what he's provided for you. Sickness is illegal against your body if Amen. you're a believer in Jesus. Yeah. And where you have to hang on and really know what you have until you become so mm -hmm. fully persuaded in your heart of what belongs to you that you outgrow a thing. Amen. So let's, um, I know you're going to share in a moment, but I just want you to take a moment uh, Heather and speak to people today mm -hmm. that need healing. I don't know what that is but there is a healing anointing on her life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons why the enemy fought her so hard 
literally from the time she was 12 up to, to that, that experience, what she, Joseph and, you know, having uh, her baby die in her womb. I mean, we're just like, anybody that's ever been used great in healing, they have these kind of yes. stories. You can look yes, at Oral do. Roberts and any of the others. So there is a healing anointing here right now for you. And I just want you to just be led by the Holy Spirit and whatever Holy Spirit's showing you, speak to those people right now. Thank you, Jesus. So right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you by your blood. You have provided all that is needed in healing and wholeness. Lord, I speak to those right now in Jesus' name. If you need healing in the memories of your mind, if you need healing in your heart and in your emotions, I thank you that the blood is covered, is covering you right now, is provided. And I say for those who need healing in their physical body right now, I say whatever you have going on, whether it's pain in your body, whether it's it's a disease, an ailment, whether it's been for five minutes or for five to 50 years, in the name of Jesus, I say every cell in your body is responding to the blood of Jesus. Every cell in your body is responding to the Holy Ghost right now and responding to what he has provided yeah. on the cross yeah. for you. He is it, right now, your body is doing and working right now as the blood is provided on your behalf. And I say anything else is illegal. Anything else, it has to leave your body now. It has to go right now. It has no authority. So we come into an agreement together right now for healing and wholeness. Just begin to lay hands on yourself and begin to speak life. Yes, I Jesus. say life to your body, yes, life to your flesh, life in the name of Jesus over your memories and healing right now. And I release peace. I release the peace of Jesus nothing broken and nothing lacking. I release peace over your mind, peace over your heart, but I release peace into your physical body. And I say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you that you paid it all. Thank you, Jesus, that this is paid in full, that your blood is covering everything. It's covering your situation. He is right there with you. He is in yes. your house, in your place, and in your family. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank well, you, Lord. And again, thank you so much, Heather. And if you need someone to pray with you, we want to do that, 1-800-329-0029. But the biggest healing you will ever experience is having Jesus become your mm -hmm. Lord and Savior. Thank you. And if you've walked away, maybe you're a PK, maybe you just grew up in a home, maybe you've never met Jesus, but you know you need to come home. Yes. Something's been hitting your heart while we've been talking. And all you need to do is real simple. Just pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I want you to be Lord. I want you to be Lord. I want all of your spirit. I want all of your spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And if that's you today, we have a couple things we want to give to you, but you have to give us a call or send us an email. We want to give you the book of John, no ordinary book of John. In this is a QR codes for every chapter so you can actually understand what you're reading. And also we have the book, What Now What?, so that you can walk out your faith. And you need to give us a call or send us an email. Heather, all these prayers from all over the world came in. Would you pray over these? I'd be happy to. I thank you, Jesus, right now. Lord, we just send your word. I thank you, Father, that your covenant is working on their behalf. Yes, Jesus. And we just release the power of Jesus over them right now Amen. to heal and Amen. hold.